The idea of democracy is that we follow the law, the law is written by our leaders, and the leaders are picked by us. And we have this whole involved process for picking leaders that can take a year or more because it's pretty important that the person in charge got the people's approval. So isn't it a pretty big problem that most of us, most of the time, don't approve of how things are being run? It wasn't consent of the governed, the whole point? I'm here from California Approves to let you know this problem is not your fault. The problem isn't us. It's not the law. It's not even the leaders. The problem is in how we pick our leaders. That process we have now, where you get a ballot with a list of names that says, pick one, that process does not reliably give the public what it asks for. And there is actually a very simple way to make it better. We just change a single line. Pick one or more. I know that sounds wild, but hear me out. You've probably done this before. If you've ever used one of those scheduling apps where you mark all the times you're free for a meeting, or... You know what? Here. Imagine that it's movie night. We've just arrived at the theater with a big group of friends, and now we have to decide what we're going to see. There's an action movie, a romantic comedy, a horror film, a drama, an animated kids movie, and a Swedish art film. So, we would ask... Okay, who likes action? And who likes rom-coms? Horror? Drama? Cartoons? Art films? Okay, so the romantic comedy is the most popular option. Let's go see a rom-com. And that's pretty simple, right? We call this approval voting. It's an effective way to check the general popularity of a bunch of different options. Now just imagine, if we picked movies the way we pick legislators. All right, so listen up, we're gonna divide into two groups. We'll call them parties, even though they're not any fun. Party one will pick the top fun movie, and party two will pick the top serious movie. And then we'll do a second round where we all pick from the two winners. So split up and choose wisely, because in each round, you can only pick one. Does this change how things turn out? Well, it's actually kind of a funny story, and you can tell me if any of this sounds familiar. In the serious movie party, there's a bunch of horror diehards. Everyone knows they won't vote for anything else. The rest of the party doesn't really like horror, but can't agree on what to watch instead, so they split the vote between drama and art film, and horror pulls ahead. Now, the fun movie party figures this will happen, so their question isn't what's our favorite, but who beats horror? Now, the rom-com did well overall, but is it still the favorite in a head-to-head -head with horror specifically? I mean, what if the drama fans decide horror is closer to what they want than comedy? Maybe action is more their speed? It was almost as popular as the rom-com. So Fun Movie Party rallies around action. But something the Fun Movie Party didn't count on was that the few people who don't like action, they really don't like action. Sick of it. Not too fond of horror either, but in a head-to-head -head between their least favorite and their second least, they pick the scary movie. And one just writes in kids' movie as a protest, even though it's throwing their vote away. This just barely gives horror the edge. So, that's what we saw. Democracy in action is five people getting what they want, everyone else having kind of a bad evening, and the most popular option, not even making the ballot. Now tell me you haven't lived through an election like this. Deciding what movie to watch is much lower stakes than deciding who's going to represent you to your government. California faces a lot of challenges. These are the big five. The whole state over, even across party lines, these are what Californians care about the most. But they never seem as important to our elected officials, even though we're the ones who elected them. And there are a few reasons for that. One is strategic voting, the rom-com problem. Say the issue you care about is jobs, and there's a candidate with a plan for increasing employment that you love. In fact, a lot of people love it. It's mopping the floor with everything else in the polls. You'd be thrilled to vote for this candidate. But the frontrunner for the other party has no plan whatsoever for dealing with employment, and you're worried the candidate you like, for any number of reasons, can't beat the candidate who'll do nothing. And there is someone else in the race you think could beat them, and whose employment policy is... fine? It's not your favorite, but it's not nothing. So what do you do? You can vote for what you want, 
or against what you don't want, but you can't do both, picking the compromise means hurting your best case candidate. Picking your favorite helps your worst case candidate. We say democracy is voting your beliefs, but do you feel safe doing that? Now, what if your favorite could win? I mean, their policies are very popular, but should you risk it? Real people's jobs hang in the balance. And why doesn't the leading candidate just adopt the more popular jobs bill? I mean, wouldn't that be good for everyone? Oh, but you see, you only have one vote to give and they both want it. The only way one can get it is by keeping it from the other, which means even though they're both trying to help California workers, they have to run as opponents. They have to smear members of their own party, dismiss policy they might otherwise support. It's winner take all, so your safe bet candidate has to treat your favorite as an enemy, and you like a fool if you vote for them. It's not safe to do anything else. Under approval voting, this gets a lot simpler. You say yes to everything you want, most yeses wins. Your preference and your safety don't compete for your vote because they share it at no cost to each other. And you don't have to guess which jobs bill is more electable, because if everyone is voting for everything they like, you'll find out which is most electable when it gets elected. Now another issue we face is spoilers, the kids movie problem. Say this time the issue you care about is housing. And similar to the last example, there are two candidates with housing policies running against one without. But this time your favorite is polling at 15%. They're an independent with a tiny campaign budget. There is no chance of them winning. So this time you're probably going to vote for the safe bet. Most people will. But not everyone. Some folks are going to vote for their favorite even when their favorite can't win. And I mean, they have a point. What kind of democracy makes you say no to things you agree with? But now that candidate is a spoiler. If they dropped out of the race, most of their supporters would probably vote for the safe bet. But if the spoiler doesn't drop out, and they get that 15% and leave the safe bet with 40? Then even though the majority of voters want a housing bill, neither of the candidates who have one can win. And we argue back and forth, is voting for spoilers throwing your vote away? Should spoilers drop out for the good of all? But the truth is, we shouldn't have to make those decisions. There's nothing democratic about them. With approval voting... A 15 percenter still probably won't win, but if their supporters care enough about housing to pick a backup, it doesn't cost anything to run. They're not a spoiler anymore. They can keep doing interviews and debates, still be part of the conversation. How many voices do we simply not hear from because they know they can't win and they'll hurt their own allies if they try? What if every voter didn't have to fall in line behind the safest housing policy and instead we heard lots of ideas? Valuable ones. Weird ones, even. What if the candidate who can win could see how much support those policies have? The long shot has little chance of winning, but why should it be no chance? The last issue I want to talk about is vote splitting, the horror movie problem, where similar candidates take votes from each other instead of their common opponent. Now, Both spoilers and strategic voting are types of vote splitting, but there's a third type we haven't talked about. This time, let's imagine there's a candidate with an environmental stance that you hate. In fact, almost everybody hates it. 85% of the state says they would prefer literally anything else. And fortunately, there is a lot of anything else out there. There are eight people in this election, and all seven other candidates share a popular and uncontroversial position on the environment. Which should be a good thing, right? I mean, that's seven to one odds of getting what you want, right? Well, with only one vote to give, you've got to pick which of these seven gets it. Every voter does. And what happens if you don't all pick the same one? What happens if the candidate with the most opposition gets their 15% and everyone else splits the rest? Sometimes ideas get punished for being popular. And here's how that looks under approval voting. People who say anything but this can vote for everything but this. There is little chance of a candidate with 85% opposition ever winning an election again. St. Louis made the switch to approval voting in 2020. At the time, it was very popular. But what happened a year later once people saw it in action? It got more popular. This works 
Approval voting is easy to understand and quick to implement. Where other voting reforms can take over a year to build and explain and put into practice, approval voting is up and running in a matter of months because it doesn't use anything we don't already have. It's the same ballots, the same polling machines. We just switch from picking one to picking everyone you like. And it already has California's support. Right now, nearly three quarters of the state says if switching to approval voting were on the ballot, they would vote for it. That's more than St. Louis had when they wrote it into law. So the only thing standing between California, approval voting, and a more representative democracy is the funding it takes to get it on a ballot. California Approves is now raising funds to collect the hundreds of thousands of signatures necessary. At CaliforniaApproves.org, you can make a donation, volunteer, or buy merchandise to support the effort. Every little bit helps. And together, we can make elections what they're supposed to be. Simple, accurate, and honest.